In this Rhino Grasshopper tutorial, we want to model the 80 Hz pavilion, something similar to that in Grasshopper. And as you can see, I can change the location of the point at the first point attractor will define the base surface or form, and the second point attractor will define uh, how these uh, petals rotate. So this tutorial will help you to understand how to use point attractors and rotation to make something similar to this one. And you can also change the size of the distance between these things, like this, uh, the amount of x count and y count, please decrease that, uh, the minimum and the maximum of the movement, and the rotation. Here, increase the rotation or decrease it. Okay. So before we start the tutorial, let's just take a look uh, uh, about the algorithm, how it's working, and then we're going to make that from scratch. So uh, the first step is to produce an uh, array of points. So I'm going to just make a series of points by using the rectangular array. Uh, then I'm going to define a point attractor and find the distance. Let me just zoom in. The distance between the point attractor and the grid of points. Uh, then I'm going to use a remap number to move them uh, like this here in the y direction. Uh, after moving these points, we're going to uh, find and put an xy plane on each of these points and then rotate them around the x-axis. So that's going to help us to produce a rotation. Uh, we're going to use that point attractor thing to rotate these planes can see that we can take these planes based on the point attractor like that and then we're going to use the dispatch technique which I will explain in this tutorial to uh, use only uh, one in a row so it's going to be like true false true false till the end we're going to use that to get the planes and then we're, go uh, we're going to use the rectangle and surface uh, with a fillet radius to produce the final results. That's the final result. Uh, we're going to exercise this in today's tutorial. So be sure to like this video so the, uh, you, yeah, the YouTube will show you more of our videos and also subscribe uh, to our channel. And before I start the tutorial, if, our, uh, if you're new to our channel, uh, you can watch this series of tutorials and uh, why you should learn Grasshopper, what is Grasshopper and how it works, and a one hour a beginner tutorial so you can understand the basics of Grasshopper. Uh, also, before we start the tutorial, if you want to learn Grasshopper step by step, advanced lessons, and more about Grasshopper, you can enroll in our course. We have lots of uh, definitions added to the course each day. Uh, course lessons added, so you can all, uh, also enroll in our course and uh, learn uh, more about Grasshopper. Okay, let's get started from scratch. Uh, first of all, I want to produce a series of points, a grid of points, so we can go to the vector and grid. I'm going to use this square grid if I want to make it square, and rectangle if you want to control the x and the y. So uh, let me put the bifocals plug in. That the plane is going to be the xz plane, which is going to make the grid, and the size of the x and y. Let's give this a number slider for the x and the y, so we can control it later. And then we can give this the number of the x and the y, maybe from 3 to 25 for the x. And the Y, make it like that. Okay, uh, we have the cells and the points here. You can't see the points. Uh, to see it, you can go to the farms and connect the point to here. Turn this off. Okay, the most important thing about grids, I mean the vector and the grid section, uh, is that they produce the outputs in groups. A group of data. You can see that this is like 13 groups of 9 and that is because the number of the x and the y and we don't need that. That means that 
if I connect a curve interpolation to these points, you can see that they are in rows. We don't need that. We have to put them all in one group. So we can just right click and flatten this. And if you don't know about the flatten graph and these simplified things, I'm going to put up a tutorial which is related so you can understand that. And those who want to know really in-depth tutorial about flatten graph simplifying group data, you can enroll in our course. We have a complete lesson on that. Okay, uh, let's just turn this interpolation, delete that interpolation. Now we have 117 points in one group. Okay, we can just change the number of the x and the y and also the distance. Let's just decrease that distance to maybe 30 to control that points and increase them in the x, y direction. Okay, the next part is to define a point attractor. So I'm going to go to the parms and point, set one point here. Uh, be sure that the display gumballs is on. And it's really obvious we have to find a distance, this dist, distance between this point attractor and the points and the grid points. Okay, so again, we can find the distance, and this distance will help you to move these points in the y direction. Uh, let's just find the distance. You can see that we have a group of distance here, and then we can move these points MV move in the y direction. If I give this distance to the move, you can see it's a little bit out of control. First of all, we have to uh, change this instead of here being inside, I want this one to go outside and this one to come inside. How can we fix that? We have to just work on the distance, so I'm going to go here, uh, type remap, Use the remap numbers because we have used the remap plus which we made in the previous tutorials. But now I want to use the remap numbers because it's the a default thing in Grasshopper. You can find it in uh, math and in the domain. Okay, remap numbers uh, change the number from a, a target domain here, a source domain to a target domain. So we want to change these distances. The source of this is obviously between something like, I don't know, maybe 53 to 122. To find that, we can go to the math and use this bounds. So remember, always and always, this remap numbers is going to be combined with bounds to find the minimum and the maximum of the source. And the target is going to be in the math construct domain because we want to define the minimum and the maximum of the target domain. So uh, in the future tutorials, I'm always going to use remap numbers with bounds and construct domain to control it. So this is the minimum and the maximum movement in the y direction. Maybe we want to move that from 0 to 40 with two decimals. The minimum and the maximum, that's changing the distance between this new domain. Then we can give it to the y. Okay, so if I increase that. Now, what we want to do is to change this uh, so we can just simply swap the minimum and the maximum, and that's going to give us the result we want. So, this technique was a good one if you want to use a point attractor to move a series of points. If you want to use graph mappers, control more on this surface. You can use graph mappers and those things, which we have in our course, and you can enroll in that. Okay, let's go forward. Next part is to produce those panels. I'm going to put that into uh, XY plane, so you can see them. Let me make that smaller. That's it. Uh, now what we want to do is to rotate these planes. So I'm going to say rotate 3D. The rotate 3D is the best choice because it's going to rotate it around the axis. And the center of rotation is going to be uh, the point of the plane. You can connect the plane also to the center. It's going to uh, extract 
the center of the, pla uh, the plane, obviously. So that's a trick you can use. Always you can connect a plane to a point. It's going to extract the center. Now the axis is obviously in the x direction, so I'm going to just skip this x. In other projects, you have to define it by uh, extracting a plane, deconstructing a plane, and finding each of those x, y local axes. For now, let's just make that as simple as possible. Okay, uh, I'm going to right-click and define a degrees here. And... Uh, if I give this a number slider, you can see that we can rotate these planes easily. I guess that a minus degree in the angle is better. Expression minus x, that's going to give you better results. Okay. Now we have to also use that point attractor technique for this one. So you, the best thing about Grasshopper is that you can copy a logic from the before part of this uh, algorithm, just control C, control V, bring it here, define a new point attractor, bring it up a little bit so it's going to be different from the first one. This is the second attractor. Uh, now we want to define the minimum and the maximum rotation, right? I'm going to say between 0 and maybe 70 degrees. And then we can give that remapped data to the angle. That's it. And by changing the point attractor, it's going to change the rotation of these planes. That's exactly what we want. To make the final results, we have to pick between these things. Uh, like, I just skip this one. For example, it's going to be these panels till the end. And at the next row, we have to pick up this one, right? So it has to be something like that. I'm going to show you a trick to do that. For example, uh, I want to see the number of these planes, okay? I'm going to go to the display and select the point list and connect this geometry or plane switch. Obviously, just as I said before, if you connect a plane to a point, it's going to extract the center. Let's just right click and bake this to see the numbers. Okay. Uh, you can see that this is going to the top, so we have to pick up the numbers. First of all, if we want the, okay, let's see the numbers here. We need 0, then we need 2, then we need 4, and we go up. But it's really important to reach this number for the next column, right? Because we don't want to, we want this zigzag pattern on the planes. What's happening here is that this number is not uh, even because it's like 0, 2, 4 till the end, which is going to be 10. It's then going to just pick the 12, which is near this one. How can I fix that? We have to go here and see which one is going to define the number of the y in the y direction. Uh, obviously, this is the y one. And instead of 11, I'm going to just double click and make this even. That means always it's going to be even. Let's just check this out again. OK. And it's going to be like 0, 2, till 10. And then it's going to just jump to 12. 14, 16, to 20, and again, it's going to jump to 22, 24, till the end. That is a little trick you can use. Uh, I see some people just uh, produce two set of groups, then just dispatch that in this one. But this is a cool trick you can use to extract uh, the planes you need. So I'm going to say dispatch these planes, and the pattern is really good true false so it's going to be true false true false till the end and obviously we need just one of those groups so i'm going to connect a plane from the farms menu to one of them whatever you want is on the view of this project <clears throat> let's turn on the point attractor let's change the distance little bit, increase the numbers, and we can do 
produce different results. So remember, the force, uh, the first point attractor will help you to deform this. And if I bring it up, you can see that it's going to also deform it at the, uh, at the height. Then we have to define the second point attractor, which will define the rotation. Maybe we want to open up this here. You can also increase it maybe to more degrees. Remember that you have to put that on degrees so you can control it easier. Okay, now it's time to produce that petals. Uh, I'm going to go to the curve primitive, which is simple curves, and use this, let's go down, rectangle, plane rectangle, to give those to the plane. Uh, you can see it's a domain. That means uh, defining in minus x to plus, like minus 1 to 1, and then also in the y direction. So I'm going to go into the math, construct domain, another domain, and because I want to give it exact size, for example, it's like 12.5. Okay, I usually use that number because it's between 0 and 10, uh, 0 and 100, and it's going to put that number slider between that. Okay, if I give that to the start and end, I'm going to say minus in the expression, minus x divided by 2. Obviously, let me just explain this part. Uh, if you have this plane and want to make that, you can and assume that this is the length. You have to stay from minus l divided by 2 to l divided by 2, right? The length is going to be L. So that's like minus x divided by 2 to x divided by 2. And I think that's a little bit big. So I'm going to make that to maybe 10. Then copy, control C, control V, paste this, give this to the y size, and increase. that later and now we can give also a radius for the fillet so you just increase that's going to go like this and then we can go to the forms menu and connect a surface to this turn everything off and we have the final results that's really easy you can see it's not a hard one and we can produce that easily by changing the point attractor, changing the distance if we want to. Like this. And produce the results. That's how you can make something similar to the 80 Hertz pavilion. Okay, I hope uh, that this tutorial was useful. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Remember the like button. The like button is really important. It's going to support our channel. We will try to produce uh, tutorials each week, many tutorials each week. So remember to subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.